this one is problem 1.25 it says a freely pivoted light rod it is pressed against the rotating wheel okay and there's a force p applied which is right at the center here and we need to compute the friction force at this point right here as a function of other parameters for two cases in one case the wheel is rotating clockwise and the other case the wheel is rotating counterclockwise okay and this point right here in both cases is pivoted right so it is sort of free to rotate but it will not be allowed to move in x and y direction for this purpose uh, we will try to draw the forces at this point right here so if you look at the rod here a rod with respect to the wheel since wheel is going backwards the tendency of motion for the rod is to the right side so therefore the friction force is going to be opposing the motion so your friction force is going to be this way so let's call that friction force f now if the coefficient of friction is small f here the normal reaction at this point n can be written as capital f divided by small f now going by the same logic here your friction force will be to the right and your normal reaction again is going to be capital f divided by small f so now let us do the movement balance for the bar and we will do this movement balance about the pivot point okay so this point this force p about this point will give you a clockwise movement and the movement arm is going to be this horizontal distance so p times the horizontal distance is going to be l by 2 cos theta now similarly this n force this will give you a anti clockwise movement so it's going to be minus n and the distance is going to be l cos theta and this force f right here about this point will give you a clockwise movement and the movement arm is going to be this vertical height so it's going to be plus f l sin theta equals to 0 so this is the case for your counterclockwise wheel motion similarly for clockwise wheel motion we can write these equations so first term remains the same because direction is same the second term also remains same because the direction is same and the last term will change because f direction has changed so fl sin theta equals to 0 so now we can make use of n equals to capital f over f substitute into this equations and if you solve we can find out the value of your friction force f for the counterclockwise case and this will be p times f and if you simplify this comes out to be 1 minus f tan theta and similarly for the clockwise case the only difference is between the sign of these two terms so in the denominator this time we are going to get 1 plus f tan theta so in one case it is plus in one case it is minus now for the last question here it says one of these cases is referred as friction lock which one is and why so friction lock uh, this friction force should become really really high so which one of these cases do you feel friction can become really really high based on the problem parameters so in this this first term right here because there is a negative sign in the denominator so if the denominator goes down to zero this friction force can go really really high right and the condition for that is when you one minus f tan theta becomes zero or your theta is tan inverse of one over f in that condition your ccw case start behaving as a friction lock where your friction force will become infinity